Okay, uh, if you watched my shop update the other day, you saw that I got the um, 71 and a half router plane as one of the uh, one of the things I won in the auction. So that's what I've got here. I got soaking in um, my standard mixture of 50/50 water and vinegar. Uh, it's coming up on 48 hours now. I've already taken it out once, scrubbed it, put it back in. So I'm going to take it out now for the final time. I'm um, going to take it inside and scrub it. And then I'm going to start. Um, that probably won't repaint it. It's a little too cold right now. Um, plus, I don't have any gray paint. I want to kind of keep it the same color. So, but this is it. This is the 71 and a half. Um, it's slightly different than the 71, which I already had. This is another one that I, I soaked. It still has a little bit of crud in the corners. I want to work on it a little bit more in the future and then um, repaint it as well. The main difference between the two is um, this one has what they call an open throat and this one's flat. Um, they're the same size overall, but um, from what I understand, the 71s originally looked like this. And then at some point, Stanley decided to come out with this one. And then people still wanted this one, so then they came out with a 71 and a half. Um, but what they did with this one, the 71, um, was they put on some years, they put this socket right here where you can put a foot will go in there and basically close that back up again. Um, I have mine, the foot appeared to, the shaft was probably original, but the foot itself seemed like something somebody had uh, simply tacked on there later and it was frozen in here and when I was trying to get it out, um, it snapped off. So I haven't replaced that yet. Um, this was pretty frozen. I think I had to apply heat to it to get it off. Um, and, and then I had no other issues with that. I took the knobs off. Uh, sanded them, probably on the lathe, I don't remember. And I don't remember if I put boiled linseed oil on there. Some of these are rosewood, some of them aren't. Boiled linseed oil on rosewood turns it really dark. Um, regardless, my hands are usually really dirty. And um, just an oil finish, the wood I noticed was uh, soaking up the dirt from my hands really thick so and fast. So what I did was I went ahead and... Uh, coated them in shellac and I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. I'm not reselling it so I'm not worried about collector value. These are the ones off the 71 and a half. So I'll clean these up and I, actually if you see those lines in there it looks like either somebody already did or they just did a really bad job sanding on a lathe when they first made it. But um, So I'm going to go ahead and sand these up real fast and then I might try the vinegar, turpentine, boiled linseed oil mix, let that dry, and then add shellac over the top of that and see how they turn out, just because, why not? Um, and we'll see how that goes. The same same treatment I'm using on the wood planes that I'm fixing up right now, which is in a separate video. So, like, these are for the 71 and a half. Um, I'm gonna take this inside, scrub it real quick, dry it off. Um, with the vinegar, you gotta be careful because this stuff will rust immediately like before as you're looking at it as it dries it will immediately rust before your eyes um, so I'll do that and then one last thing before I go um, I always save this stuff um, it seems so straightforward I didn't even think about it until I was watching an episode of the Wood Whisperer so I've got the uh, original container I've got a funnel with a paint strainer and then I'll just uh, pour it back in here there's screws still in here so the funnel with the paint strainer um, it's really helpful because I don't lose them and it also gets a lot of the debris that may have been stuck in corners um, you'd be surprised what ends up in here and as it sits a lot of the sediment will settle at the bottom so the longer these go without being used the sediment will be caked on the bottom so what I do is uh, when I Like this one here, I took the jug inside of the sink, rinsed out the hot water, got all that sediment out, sediment out of the bottom. So here's the uh, rest of the pieces to the 71. We've got the uh, depth depth screw, the screw to hold the knobs on, the collar to hold the blade, and then the uh, the blade itself. So 
This will all go inside. I'm going to clean them all up. There's two videos I'm filming here at the same time. One of them is the restoration of these two, three, these three hand planes. And the other one is at 71 and a half. Okay. So, um, both of these are going to go through the same process for the hand plane watchers. Um, I started this on Friday and then, um, I applied two wipe on coats of the cider vinegar, the turpentine and the boiled linseed oil. I wiped it on and it looked okay, but I wasn't getting the results I wanted to get. Maybe it just wasn't fast enough for me. I don't know. So I added a lot more, uh, this time around I did a, I think a quarter of a cup last time. It's a little over a half a cup of each ingredient this time. And I'm just going to soak them. Um, I was real nervous about getting these wedges mixed up, but as you can probably see on the video, they're completely different sizes. There's no way I'm going to do that. So I'm just letting them soak. I'm going to let them soak for a couple more minutes. I'm going to flip them over and keep that going. For the 71 and a half, these are the knobs. I cleaned them up gently. I left as much of the patina as I could, but I got all the grit and grime off of them um, to the point where I'm pretty happy with them. I don't know what kind of wood this is. Stanley typically used rosewood, but not on every plane. There are some years where they didn't, and there are some planes where they didn't. So uh, I know boiled linseed oil typically darkens rosewood, and an oil finish by itself I've had bad luck with. It just soaks up the grit and grime from my hands and turns the knobs really dark and dingy looking. So I'm going to give these a shot in here. They seem pretty pale to begin with. I'm going to put them in here, soak these as well. And then I'm going to coat these in shellac later, okay? I'll preserving it for longevity. So some people might get upset. And I've seen some people that use, um, um, they dipped them in polyurethane. Look at that. Almost symmetrical. Um, they dipped them in polyurethane also. And uh, they, they came out uh, fantastic. So I'm going to, I have a bunch of shellac, so I'm going to use shellac. Um, but the good thing with um, the upside of that video uh, crashing out on me for some reason is I've also got a World War II Stanley. I believe it's a Type 17. And they had, um, they didn't use rosewood on those ones either. Most of them didn't. Some of them did, and that was probably just left over from wood they had from previous years. Um, so a lot of the times, and this one in particular is one of them, they just had a regular hardwood that was painted or stained with some sort of thick varnish. Um, I sanded that off. Um, cleaned it up, and I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to soak it in this uh, boiled linseed oil, and then I'm going to um, shellac this as well. So that one's in there. I'm still working on the tote. Um, it's chipped. I'm going to go ahead and do that, see how it comes out, and if I like it, I'll go ahead and figure out how I'm going to fix it. But my intent is I'm probably just going to make a new tote altogether. I've got a bunch of ash and some other woods that I'm going to probably use. And then um, that'll give me practice because I plan on producing them and then selling them on eBay and Etsy. So that's where we're at on this. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll follow along here shortly. Not any better. Um, this quick follow-up um, earlier. I was working on those uh, hand planes that you saw earlier in the video. And uh, I'm also working on these cigar rests over here. Um, separate stuff on there where I've done the burning technique. So I'm applying the final coats of shellac. And usually I'm pretty heavy handed with these um, where I'll just dump these in the shellac, the knobs that is, not the rest, well, but I did it to those two. Um, I usually just dump these in the shellac, um, which gives you a pretty heavy uh, coarse finish on there. So this time, since I was already spraying these, I decided I'd go ahead and, and spray these. So these have two coats on them already. And I'm about to apply the final coat to these, uh, which will be the third coat for um, the knobs and the, and the tote as well. Um, I don't know how well you can see how it was broken before. So eventually I'll get around to shaving this flat and then making a, a beaver tail. And um, since this isn't really a good uh, rosewood handle, this will be a good practice one. So um, that's where we're at. I'm not going to film while I'm painting because then it's going to go over my lens and it's just a pain in the ass. I don't want to have to deal with it. So that's where I'm at with that. All right. So one last little bit on the 71 and the 71 and a half. I finished um, cleaning up the knobs. I soaked them in that mixture of turpentine, boiled linseed oil, and um, 
cider vinegar with those planes. And then I went ahead and sprayed shellac. Usually I dip them. It's a little bit heavy handed and probably not the best thing to do. Um, you get a pretty rough finish on all the times. So this time I was already spraying some other stuff with shellac. So I went ahead and sprayed these two, which is, I think, why they look better than the other ones. The other ones were dipped. I don't see the difference there. Uh, these were dipped and then waxed. So I still got to wax these ones. And I'm really not done with either of these planes yet. Um, both of these are going to get a uh, thorough scrubbing of the metal because there's still a bit of rust in the corners you can't really see there that I'm going to go ahead and get out. I'll repaint them, probably gray. I've seen them black. Um, I'm not sure if I necessarily want these black. I don't know why it's particular about that. And then I'm going I'm to clean the bottom of it just like you would a regular plane. Um, and you can watch any number of videos on there. My video on restoring a number four is up. And it, it shows that whole process of cleaning the sole, which is what I did with this one. I didn't go as aggressive as I could have, which is why the edges here are still not flattened, but the center section is flattened. So, like I said, this is 71 and the 71 and a half. I really want to use this one. For some reason, this one's more popular, but everything I've used them for so far, I need this support right here, which I know there is a support that goes here. I just don't have one that works yet, so i got to buy another one or figure out a way to weld the one I, that came with it that broke on me, which I think was a replacement as well. So, router planes, and this whole time I've been showing you the restoration of this one, how easy it is, and uh, really... Really haven't talked about what we use them for yet, so that's what I'm going to show you real quick. Okay, um, you probably cannot see it, but uh, before I cut this rabbit, I went down here with the um, oh crap. I had a lot weight going there. I came down here with my marking gauge and uh, I I basically put my line and I've cut down to it a little bit past it right here, but I'm I'm. A 32nd of an inch above it here. So the great thing about rabbit planes, or excuse me, router planes, is you set that depth and then you use these to now come in all along this rabbit or dado and make everything the even height you need it to be. Um, sharpening them is a whole other art form that I have yet to master, but all I do is just come along this rabbit, clean it up, and it's all going to be that exact same depth. Okay. Now you got to be careful, depending on how the grain orientation is, it could catch this bit and pull it down in, which will give you a deeper cut, um, which happens to me a lot, and that's why I like the ability to have this here so that I've got that extra support versus this where it's wide open and it starts to pull it down. So when you use these, you have to you have to press there and a lot of times you're just doing this. You're just working it, working the, sub, the unsupported side by putting all your weight on the supported side. And that's it, that's all you do. And even if you're using an electric router to cut this, you can still go back and clean it with this. Um, you know, electric routers aren't necessarily always the most accurate. So you can cut really, really close with an electric router and then come back in with a router plane and finish it. So um, that's it. That's, that's what the 71, the 71 and a half, the Preston, the Lee Valley, the Veritas, everybody's... Uh, Lee Valley makes or Lee Valley sells Veritas. Um, Lee Nielsen, I mean, um, that's where all your router planes come in. Now there's another one that I'm bidding on on eBay, and there's a couple, couple of them that are out there that are miniature. They're like a quarter of this size. I don't have one yet. I'll post a video if I if, if I ever do get one. Uh, I'm, I'm not in a rush. And I, I don't foresee getting one anytime soon. So my battery's dying. That's a router plane. Like, subscribe, check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching.